Thank you. Call the uh, meeting to order for the district of Chatwin. Uh, can I uh, have the opening statement read, please? As we gather today in the traditional territory of the Treaty 8 Nations to conduct the business of the District of Chetwin, we do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in their best interests. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Councillor. This is uh, Mayor Coutre. Uh, we are had the opening statement read, and we are ready to conduct business. Okay. Thank you very much. If um, if I lose you again, that means I lost service. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We will uh, continue to conduct our business as uh, minutes adoption of the agenda. Any new business prior to adoption of the agenda? Yes. Councillor? Yeah. Um, I'd like to um, uh, check in on the old hotel site. Um, also the legal open, open drug use bylaw and the uh, and an extension of the uh, Extension of the uh, 30 kilometer zone by a little prairie school. That's it. Any other new business? Not seeing any. The three, three new items said. All those in favor? I'll make motion. Okay. I'll make the motion to adopt the yes. minutes uh, with the three new additions. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Okay. All those in favor. Here. Okay. Minutes of the public hearing held on May twenty-third, twenty twenty-three. Motion to adopt. Second. All those in favor? Here. Minutes of the regular council meeting held on May 23rd, 2023. I'll make a motion to adopt. Second. Any errors or omissions? Not seeing any. All those in favor? Carried. Delegations. Tammy uh, Griff Griffiths. President of the Chapman Community Arts Council. Great, great. Okay. You're up. This is Monica. She's our vice president. Hello, Monica. Hello. See if that button will work there, Monica. Are you the Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Your Worship, Mayor Kutri. Members of the District Council, I am Monica Hilton, along with Tiffany Griffiths, here on behalf of the Chetwin Community Arts Council to give our annual report. In 2022, we saw a fast track to get back to normal after that very long two-year tiptoe through the pandemic. Being able to gather again has been heartwarming for everyone and very much needed. Projects that were happening in the background were able to come to light last year, and the timing was amazing as mandates were lifted and we were able to get our community members together to participate in person and away from the screens. In April, we installed a memorial piece for our past president, Brenda Maisie. This has been placed at the Visitor Center at 5400 North Access Road and is intended to invite people to have their photo taken, framed with the beautiful mountains in the background. We invited artists from the area to create a new piece of work to become part of a legacy project 
where we get a public building with local artwork. The theme was community, comfort, a reflection of our beautiful region, and resilience. All supplies were sponsored by the Arts Council in mediums of the artist's choice, as well as framing of the final pieces and plaques that were made to accompany each. These pieces can be viewed at the Chetwin Medical Clinic for years to come. The gifting ceremony happened on June 27, 2022. We continue to work closely with the library and their children's program, the annual Children's Art Showcase, and we never turn down a chance to set up our tent and invite everyone to paint with us. This includes our annual Canada Day Art in the Park, Harvest Festival, Sorrera's Place, or inviting everyone to join us in breaking a world record. This past September 17th, our community came together and became official Guinness World Record holders for the most people painting simultaneously while blindfolded. The best five minutes ever. We needed 250 to make the record, and at final count, we had 340. It was amazing. Our town is amazing. And, and now we have a certificate that says we are all officially amazing. In the end, 300 of the pieces will come together to make a total a, a local landscape of Tabletop Mountain and will be permanently installed on the south-facing outer wall of the curling rink. We have taken on Circus Camp, which as you can see from our financials, came with its own existing funds and will be considered as its own project and separate from the Chetwin Community Arts Council's regular reporting. Circus Camp occurred on April 10th, 2023 until April 14th. More information was advertised through local media outlets and registration was done through the Chetwin Public Library inviting everyone to participate. It was a huge success and we expect an even better turnout in 2024. Our Arts Council has recently started planning the installation of a pottery kiln and 10 pottery wheels with tables. We're, we are working closely with the Tansy Friendship Center and will be setting up in their building. There, will, there we will host pottery workshops for local community, a children's lesson, family lesson, and a workshop for seniors. Within this, we will hire an instructor for crafting pottery and then bring in, next page, Aboriginal artists to teach the groups painting in the style of their culture while sharing the spiritual values of the artist. Over the last several months, Chetwin Community Arts Council has been helping promote music through very well attended open mic events, which gives seasoned and new performing artists and musicians a stage on which to hone their craft. We would like to thank you for your continued support and look forward to some new exciting things to come. Arts and culture are thriving and opportunities are plenty. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Do you have any questions? Any questions? <laughs> any? Yeah, it was a great event, uh, five minutes uh, exposure. And now now it continues, it doesn't matter. That five minutes is going to continue forever because we're the first ones. Well, we're one of the ones that were in it to break a record, so doesn't matter what happens from here on in. I think so we were the first ones place. to actually break that record. Yeah. And, and for, uh, have the medical clinic have, uh, have their, uh, have the art displayed there was uh, really awesome. Great idea. So it was uh, wonderful uh, for the community. Thank you. Thank you for your yeah. support. Yeah. I, think the, I think the work that Arts Council is doing amazing, obviously. Um, and I did see the judge that flew in from New York City to judge us for the Guinness World Record breaking. Um, was posting with Dolly Parton last week, so basically, basically famous. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, and we have Alan Bowen, uh, Saunders uh, uh, Road, Bowen, Grendel, LLP, uh, 22 Financial Statement. Thank you. Uh, so, for those who don't know me, I'm Alan Bowen. I'm one of the partners. Uh, I'm one of the partners 
with Santa Rosa Bone Grindle, Chartered Professional Accountants, and have been your auditor for a number of years. Uh, I've worked my I worked my way up from being a low level student and and doing all the little ticking and bopping to now I get to be invited here to present the uh, auditor's report. So I very much appreciate the the invitation, and I I'll present you the the auditor's report now. We have audited the financial statements of the District of Chetwin, which comprise the Statement of Financial Position as at December 31st, the Statement of Operations, the Statement of Cash Flow, and the Statement of Change in Net Financial Assets for the, the year that ended. In our opinion, except for the possible effects of any matters described in the Basis for Qualified Opinion section of our report, the accompanying financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the District of Chetwin as at December 31st, 2022. Basis for a qualified opinion. The District has not adopted the Section PS 3260 Liability for Contaminated Sites of the Public Sector Accounting Board Handbook, which establishes how to account for and report a liability associated with the remediation of contaminated sites. The effect of the effect on the financial statements as a result of not adopting the new section are that the liabilities and expenses could be understated and accumulated surplus could be overstated. The amounts, if any, are not known. We conducted our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. We believe that, that the audit evidence that we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our qualified opinion. Management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of these financial statements in accordance with Canadian accounting standards for public sector and for such internal controls as management determines is necessary to enable the preparation of the financial statements that are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. Those charged with governance are responsible for overseeing the municipality's financial reporting process. Our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. Misstatements can arise from error, fraud or error, and are considered material if individually or in the aggregate, they could reasonably be expected to influence the economic decisions users take in on the basis of the financial statements. As part of an audit, in accordance with Canadian generally accepted accounting standards, we exercise professional judgment and maintain professional skepticism throughout the audit. We also identify and assess the risks of material misstatement of the financial statements, whether due to fraud or error, design and perform our audit procedures responsive to those risks and obtain audit evidence that is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. We obtain an understanding of the internal controls relevant to the audit in order to design our procedures that are appropriate in the circumstances, but not for the pur purpose of expressing an opinion on the effectiveness of the municipality's internal controls. We evaluate the appropriateness of the accounting policies used and the reasonableness of the accounting estimates and related disclosures made by management. We conclude on the appropriateness of managers' use of a going concern basis of accounting, and we evaluate the overall presentation structure and con content of the financial statements, including the disclosures, and whether the financial statements represent the underlying transactions and events in a manner that achieves fair presentation. So that's our auditor's report. Um, to kind of translate all of, all, 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 all of that, um, with the exception of, of the, the handbook section that has not been adopted yet, it is a clean audit, audit report, so we congratulate uh, Mayor and Council as well as management for all the hard work in, in, in preparing this report. Thank you. Any questions for uh, Ellen Bowen for the audit? I just have to say thanks to the staff, as you alluded to, is that as counselor and mayor, we are only make decisions on the financial part. We don't really have too much to do with the counting, and we are very uh, proud of our staff for giving us uh, these kind of audits. Thank you all. Thank you.
Awesome. Thank you for your report today. Uh, were there any recommendations that you did make regarding internal controls? Uh, only that we need to adopt the, the, the handbook section, uh, which the plan is in discussion with, with management is, is that this section along with one other set, the, the new upcoming section uh, that comes into effect in 2023 uh, will, will both hopefully be adopted this year. Thank you. Okay, not seeing any. We need a motion to accept the auditor's report. Motion to accept. It would be for, for, for both. Staff? I believe we need a motion for both. Uh, I don't know what's with these things. We do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just go ahead and tell me uh, that. Motion to accept the report from the Czech Community Arts Council. Yes. As well as yes. the auditor's report today. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion on those two uh, reports? If not, go ahead. Councilor? The Arts Council did make a request for, um, is that done at a later date? Uh, yes, we, we can make a, a resolution later, and uh, we don't do it in front of uh, delegations, so we still have a delegation here, so we will not make that, that resolution at this time. You're, you're allowed to later on when uh, that, is that correct, uh, yeah. CIO? Yes. Yep, okay. So, yep, we, uh, we have it in our notes. So. Anyway, uh, if there's any other uh, questions, or Bowen, thank you very much thank for you. your uh, uh, for your report on the audit. Thank you very much. And we've got a uh, couple. We got a second. But uh, all those in favor of the accepted reports, any opposed? I think Janet's going. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Carry. Okay, we move on to uh, committee reports and liaisons. Any reports? I have one. Okay. The Chapman Ch International Chains of Carving Championships is coming up this weekend, so I hope everybody can get out and see it. Okay. Um, all, uh, so wood costs came in under what they anticipated, so they were able to save a little bit of funds on that. Uh, wood width came in bigger than expected as well, but likely the last year with widths this large. Um, still, these are smaller logs than previous years. Uh, site prep, uh, access, way, well, during the time of the meeting, so this was May, May 29th, um, they were hoping for access way to be done. I've noticed uh, on a drive-by that access way has been given, so it was success on that. The quick card will also be now in the main carving area with their own specific viewing area, and they're very excited to have such a big space available to them um, and they love all of the, the site prep that's been done by the district. Um, at the time of the meeting, the carvers had already started to arrive. I also saw Ryan Cook out uh, on Carver's Row today. He's getting some carvings done and they look fantastic. Um, so go and check them out if you guys have a chance. Thank you. Any other reports? No. Keep Just, uh, just one quick one in regards to the uh, seniors hall addition on the kitchen. I forgot to uh, thank uh, Laura Weisgerber for all her hard work for the uh, grants and, and just seeing that whole project through. And they were, they were very thankful of her as well. That's it. <laughs> thank you, uh, Councillor. As for uh, the mayor, PRD uh, right now they're uh, in negotiation with our uh, with our CAO, so we're uh, in the process of uh, dealing with that. And uh, we've got a couple of meetings heading to uh, uh, Doit. We're going to be attending uh, their uh, Doit days on uh, June eighth, so that's a good move. I don't believe we were uh, we had. Uh, in the past, gone to uh, these uh, 
Well, we were always invited, I believe. So that we were invited to uh, PLRDs, invited to West Mo Days, to Soto, to all the uh, uh, Indigenous groups that have their uh, days. So they're they're inviting uh, the PLRD, and I'm certain uh, we, as a council, we are all invited to. So we do get it from uh, West Mo and Soto uh, for sure. But uh, Boyd says anybody's invited to the, all communities. So uh, that's a good thing. As for uh, myself, uh, May 8th, uh, I was uh, going to attend at Austin Creek uh, NCGLA uh, Healthy Communities, but I uh, put that off because I had a very important engagement here in town. Uh, what happened here was that I put off uh, a school uh, trip from Don Titus. I had to uh, cancel my appointment with them twice. And then I said, no, my community is very important. And I said, I'm not going to cancel them again. So on May 8th, Don Titus School Kids uh, came to visit uh, with the mayor and uh, come to see the council chambers. And I uh, toured them around uh, the facilities, uh, showed them uh, empty offices because uh, staff was at NCGLA. So it was totally awesome, awesome that they said, well, who works there? What does she look like? What does he look like? I said, well, did you come back? So anyway, uh, that we just seen empty offices, but anyway, it was uh, very good. Uh, I brought him into the chambers and I made them all counselors for that time that they were here. So we were presenting them with pins that uh, we as a council and they gave to the students. There was approximately 22 of them. So in that number about 20. And uh, they all had some questions once we got into the question and answer period. Uh, one of the questions, uh, uh, the first one, how hard is it to be mayor? I said, it's not hard. And they all people <laughs> So anyway, and the second question, that, that, that was just part of it. I just figured out how it's about. And the second question seems to be come up when I talk to kids. Doesn't matter if they're in kindergarten or they visit Don Titus in, uh, in the fall of last year. Uh, how old are you? So I tell them, I said, I'm 64, and they go, Ooh, you know, all kids. Doesn't matter if they're in kindergarten or in grade three and four. So I uh, says, how did you become here? I said, well, I had to fill out uh, papers. I got forms from the office here in the district, and uh, you fill them out, and uh, the RCP had walked with them from uh, uh, Don Titus. And I said, and I have to fill out another form to make sure I'm a good person. Really? They said, one of the kids. And he said, Wait, they'll just tell you. Kids will just tell you. So one of the kids says, yeah, I says, I have to send a, I have to send a form out to the RCMP, to those uh, two folks back there. Uh, the Sergeant uh, Reese was back there and says, once they get the letter, they check, making sure that I'm OK to uh, be there, then, then I uh, get the papers back and says, I'm, I'm a delegate. I, I can uh, become here if they elect me. Who's going to let me? What's the other question? I says, people in Chapman, the ones that are 18 and they've been in, uh, in Chapman for over six months and are a citizen of Canada. And uh, they go, Am I a citizen of Canada? I says, Yes, you are. So, anyway, and, uh, the fourth question is, What can the school do for you as an heir? So, what can we do for, for you? And I said, Send more students. I said, Send more students come and visit. Uh, of the local leaders, and hopefully uh, we'll have staff in the, in the offices. So that, that was that uh, report from uh, the school kids. It was very uplifting and, uh, and friendly, and uh, especially the age, they always get some. So anyway, uh, I went to uh, NCGLA, and I started my uh, there uh, with the evening. Pro. We had Chief Kelly from, uh, from the Kelly Lake well, it's, uh, it's not their reserve yet. They haven't become status as a reserve, but they're working on it. He has to sign treaty papers, so he's on unseated, he's unseated territory, meaning that he doesn't have a treaty like uh, I do in uh, West London, so sort of, we all live on treaty age. So they got they don't have an agreement to work on it. So he said it was close. He's been the chief at Kelly Lake for 25 years. So he's been there quite a while. He's been through all the processes trying to become a combination. Yeah, and uh, at uh, the MCGL, I was very proud to show and talk about our uh, staff in Chapman. This gave me an opportunity to showcase some of our staff members that 
gives the uh, ability to look good in front of everybody as mayor and as council. Because when I go to Vancouver and uh, Victoria and uh, Prince George, I talk about what great staff I have in there. And it really pleases me that it uh, makes my job much easier to do in those places when I do have uh, staff support. And I continue to, to give the staff the opportunity to be in the high languages. As mayor and as uh, councillors, I believe, I'm only speaking on my behalf and council will speak on theirs, but my, my uh, opinion is that I have some of the staff here that I've worked with, worked with for a while, so uh, kudos to my staff and to our staff as council and to the staff for Chapman. It really goes well for Chapman. And at the highlights <clears throat> uh, were uh, Minister Kang, Minis, Minister Kang, Minister of uh, Municipal Affairs. She spoke there and uh, she uh, was very enthusiastic about uh, helping in, in our mental health, in our housing. Uh, these things are very prevalent in our uh, society today. So the, all these things, uh, she deals with the municipality, so uh, she's the closest to us if we need something to be done to write to her and to talk to her. So she was very cordial and uh, met everyone that uh, she, she could get a chance to talk to uh, after her speech. So uh, that's just a short highlight, and uh, I attended the FCM and uh, Minerals North. So I'll have a report on the FCM in my next uh, report. So I, it was uh, quite a while. I'm just going to hit a hit the pause button with my report and give you a little indication of what happened in the last uh, two or three weeks. I went to uh, NCGLA. Then I I was in Vancouver at the uh, First Nations pro uh, Coalition Projects, and I had to come back, and then I had to get in my vehicle and go pick up uh, uh, ashes for uh, my niece and her brother. So just to highlight the mental stuff that goes on in people's lives with the uh, dirty drugs and all that. So I had to do that in all this time between all the conferences. We took time out of my wife and myself to take my niece to Abbotsford collect his ashes and then bring them home. So these are the stuff that, that we deal, deal with. It doesn't just touch me, it touches uh, people in our community, people in our province, pe people in Canada. So in general, our health, uh, the mental health and the drug uh, situation of the opioids is a very big thing. So with that, uh, I'd just like to say uh, uh, thanks to the staff for making me uh, look good. And is there any other reports? Not seeing any uh, adoption of the reports or set. All motion to accept. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, the discussion items. Good. Information items one to six. Is there anything that the uh, council would like to vote? I'll make a motion to receive I1 through I6 for information. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Reports for action. Reports for action. MIB Ventures Inc. Development Permit Number uh, 05 2023. I'll make a motion. Oh, is Ron working that? Let's try this again. I make a motion that Council approve the issuance of development permit number 05 2023 to MIA Ventures Inc. for construction of an 80 by 152 warehouse at 4741 48A Street Northeast, Block 1, District Lot 1814, Peace River District, except Plan 31468, subject to Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure approval. Second. Any discussion around this item? Questions? All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. R82, facade improvement application. I may as well just go for it because it might work. Okay. 
Lincoln Oceanside Council authorizes the SOG Improvement Program application for B Line Executive Services Address 5208 North Access Road 7 BC includes attachment A to this report. To authorize a mayor and corporate officer to execute a partnering agreement with B Line Executive Services LTD 5208 North Access Road Chetwood BC and approve the issuance of development permit number 06 20. 23 to Beeline Executive Services Limited, located at 5208 North Access Road, Lot 1, Block 1, Plan PGP 15224, District Lot 398, Peace River District, Peace River Land District, included as attachment B to this report. Second. Any, you got a second? Any discussion? This is our last one. Is this our last one we can do? Yes, this is the fourth one for 2023. Okay. Any more questions? Discussion? We're good. All those in favor? Carry on. RA, RA3, Pine River Holdings Limited, development permit number 07 2023. I'll make a motion that council approve the issuance of development permit number 07-2023 to Pine River Holdings Limited for construction of an 80 by 100 building at 4528 45th Avenue Northeast, Lot 15, DL Line 494, uh, PRD Plan PGP 24681, subject to Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure approval. Second. Any questions, discussion? Are we, uh, I get a question, staff, uh, are we in compliance with all, is that an industrial part of it? Okay. All those in favor? Carry on. Uh, no more. Yeah. Oh, great. No reports or information, who this is. Yeah. Um, with the hotel, hotel properties? Yeah. Uh, I just this thing to work here, but uh, anyway, the uh, old, old hotel site, when, when are they going to resume uh, work on that? Um, we've been in really regular contact with them. They assure us they're going to be on in the summer, um, unless Ellen's had any new news in the last couple of weeks. They have been fairly proactive. Uh, a bunch of their uh, uh, fencing blew over and they had a guy over to fix it basically as soon as I let them know it happened. Um, they're, the last thing I heard was they were waiting on contractors. Is that accurate, Ella? Um, <clears throat> so it's with their legal team, so I, I can't really go into that part of it. Um, but they are tied up in finalizing stuff um, on that end. That is what their holdup was. Um, it, but Steve is correct. They're they're just waiting for those last loose items in regards to the contract. Um, if we are delayed, we could ask or request the business speak on their own behalf uh, to council. Maybe we could do that if, if it's going to be any more delayed. And I can do an email uh, request to them. I've just been asked once. Yeah. Well, they, they, at this point, they've invested $2 million into it. They do have shell backing them. They do have, uh, they, you know, they do have the anchor tenants coming in. They're, every indicator they give to us is that they're every bit as unhappy about the delay as we are, if that helps. But it doesn't really build the building yet either. So hopefully we get it all resolved very quick. Second. The uh, extension, there was a request to extend the 30 kilometer an hour zone at Don Pettit School on the north side by maybe a city block or two. And I was just uh, wondering if there's going to be any progress on that or if we're going to do that. Or, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I did talk to the director of engineering about that. We went out and looked at it at you know, separate times. The, if we extend it north, it goes past the established build it business there so that people that come in out of the business won't see it. Is, is kind of the, the feeling on it. It does conform to the standard for where the school zone is. Mm -hmm. uh, am I correct with that, Desiree? Is there anything you would add? Um, I guess my only question would be, um, what was the reason 
given. Because people are starting to start but... speed up when, uh, when they come around the corner from Long Road. And then, uh, and we don't have to necessarily move that post, we can put another one in. I mean, we've done it mm -hmm. on uh, Legion Sub, we've done it on, actually someone requested it years ago on our street and had it put in. Uh, and it's just a matter of slowing traffic down is all we request. Because I mean, I was there and I mean, when you come around that corner, you don't have to drive very far before that school zone sign yeah. is visible. Um, okay. But uh, that, that was my take on it, if they wanted, yeah, the only other thing I could see is maybe adding a playground sign with 30 kilometers per hour closer yeah. to the playground yeah. area, the ball diamonds. Okay. I'm just going to state that if we do put the sign of a uh, playground, that doesn't make it so that they're speeding up when they get around the corner by long road. So if, if we're talking about safety here, we better maybe reevaluate what we're doing. If it needs to be at the corner before you get to the school there, then maybe we should be looking at it that way. Because it, if we bring it to our attention and we don't do anything about it other than discuss it, then somebody gets her kid running across for a ball or whatever. So we better, I think we should have a, a, have a revisit it and bring it back to us and making sure that we're we're keeping the safety of our uh, school kids uh, out proud. Uh, the director and I will revisit that this week. Okay. Council, is that uh, appropriate? That, that's great. Yeah, that's all I can do is ask. Um, also, the last one is: uh, Are there any progress on the bylaw for open drug use in public places? Are we are we starting in on that at all, or? I brought it up when yeah. the Sergeant Manise was here. Okay. We're, 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 we've been polling other communities and trying to, to, to make one that works. And we've been talking with uh, Sergeant Antonio and Stevens as well about it. Uh, so it's, we've made progress, but it's not ready to come to council yet. Okay. It's, it's very, it's contentious all through the province. It's like, like the Sergeant was saying, it's, it's not meeting the needs of the communities. But they don't want to to put in a bylaw that ends up getting constitutional challenges. My take on it. So we we do have it. We have it in a. a, a we've taken it to the lawyers and we're we're reviewing it. We'll get something together as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Any more discussion on these three items? Okay. There was no still resolutions there. And uh, we had one in our, just to step back a little bit, uh, I see one on our uh, report, not report, but uh, delegations. Uh, how, how do we proceed if we want a resolution from our uh, delegation, uh, CAO? So we have, we have a resolution in there. Oh, uh, from the, the uh, yes, yeah. Would that be goes, brought to our next? Uh, that be brought, yeah, that will be brought okay. to our next council meeting. That will give us time to, to look at it. Okay. Like, yeah. Thank you. Okay. 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 We're any public uh, any questions from the public? Okay. I don't think we have any on. The, okay. Good. Michael Forward for Peace FM Chet TV, and I'm here with a uh, newer employee to Peace FM and Chet TV, Maureen Strickland. And Maureen joins us as part of the Local Journalism Initiative. Uh, welcome to the studio, Maureen. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Maureen Strickland, and I recently started here at Chet TV. Um, came from Ontario, and 
I came here to be the local journalism initiative reporter. My background is in community development, uh, about 20 years in that field. And more recently, I went back to school, did a diploma in journalism. And now I can combine the two fields here at Chat TV. Okay, and uh, as you mentioned, you're here as part of the Local Journalism Initiative. Could you tell us a little bit about that and how that brought you here? So the Local Journalism, Initi- Local Journalism Initiative is a program of Heritage Canada to put journalists in communities in Canada where there is, uh, could be a news desert or certain beats aren't being covered by the news that, that, that is in the, those areas. So this program puts print journalists, um, radio journalists, and TV journalists into communities across Canada. So Chet TV um, applied to get a uh, multimedia journalist here uh, in Chetwind, where there has not been, from my understanding, um, a dedicated journalist in the community for quite some time. Uh, I think your paper closed a number of years ago. So the purpose of the Local Journalism Initiative is to um, do journalism in these communities, bring information to citizens in these communities so that they can become more actively involved in democracy. That's the bottom line of the Local Journalism Initiative. Um, So as a reporter, I will be focusing on civic journalism uh, in Chetwind. And what is civic journalism to you? So civic journalism is really about... Um, covering issues that a community could actually uh, make a difference around. So the role of civic journalism is to, you know, look at these issues objectively, um, start, uh, help uh, facilitate conversations, um, give citizens the information so that they might be able to make a change in their community about an issue that they could be, Uh, passionate about or they feel is very um, important to their community to actually make some changes. And um, civic journalism is then about engaging citizens to become more involved in their democracy. Okay, and you mentioned uh, issues within the community. So what issues have you identified that uh, you think you'll be tackling over the next little while? Well, we've, we've, um, you know, we've, slowly started consulting with people in the community, done a lot of uh, uh, observation, reading, started to go to um, council meetings, have watched uh, Peace River or Peace Region Regional District meetings, etc. So, you know, together with um, the general manager here at Chet TV, we've come up with an initial list um, that includes um, issues around the wildfire situation, more to do with safety in the community, uh, perhaps, you know, air quality warnings, evacuations, what do people need to know? Are there safe spaces to go in the community? Uh, we've also talked about uh, rural health issues that are common to many rural areas across Canada uh, in terms of professional retention, uh, emergency departments closing, that sort of thing. We've also talked about housing issues, affordability and supply, Um safety, sort of safe spaces, how do community feel, how does community feel about um, the parks in the community? Do they feel safe going to places like Spirit Park? We've also been looking at road safety um, and uh, started to dig a little bit into um, accident statistics at some of the uh, intersections here in town. Um, Dust, I've had business, we've talked to some businesses and they've talked about the the cost of the dust in Chetwind to just their commercial running their businesses. Um, and I'm just going to check my notes here, but I believe those are the top kind of five to seven that, that we've identified. But what I would really like to get is some feedback from people in the community. Tell me the issues that you're passionate about that you would like me to look into um, or comment on the ones that I've already talked about. Okay, and if someone from the community wanted to uh, contact you, what's the best way to do that? They could call me um, here at the station. I don't remember the phone number off the top of my head. Um, Or email me at maureen at 
peacefm.ca. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, I'll just add, too, that one of the big things that I'll be doing is just generally covering um, the District of Chetwin Municipal Council meetings, as well as the Peace River Regional District meetings, and pulling out of those meetings um, information and issues that are relevant and could be of interest to the citizens here. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and best of luck in your position. Thank you very much. Thank you. which is Red Dress Day, and it's the day to honor our missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and two-spirited people. Um, red Dress Day was started by Jamie Black. Uh, she was hanging red dresses in the trees of her community to represent those that we've lost and to bring awareness. Is there anyone uh, personally in the community here that we know that we've lost? Um, and like, I guess through any of the like, highways or anything like that, do you know? Yes. Quite a few, and some some very close to our family here at Tansy Friendship Center. Sorry, you guys went. And um, so, have you guys always uh, usually been doing something for it since it began uh, to be recognized? Yes, we try to we try to make some event in whatever form it looks like each year here at Tansy. Um, in the past, we've done drumming on the front stairs. I think this was our first year for a long time doing the walk. <laughs> choose to do the walk? Um, this year we chose to do a walk because we were thinking of different ways to make awareness, have our voices heard, and actually Jeanette uh, went to training and learned how to make that big banner that you saw. So we, we put all the stories, which are the words, on that banner, and we wanted to show the whole community. Okay, and then tell me about the uh, small uh, little dolls. Oh yes, the Faceless Doll Project. So that was actually started by the Native Women's Association of Canada in 2012. Now back in 2012, there was an estimated 600 girls, women and girls, missing across Canada. Unfortunately, we don't know the, the accurate number, but we're looking at over 4,000. So the dolls represent these women who have become faceless victims of crime. And no two dolls are the same, and each one is a, each one is a story, it's a statistic. And did the community sort of partake here to make their own doll? We did. We sent some kits out to our schools in, in the community. Um, we showcased them at 10 businesses across the town. We got close to 200, which was really amazing.
Bernard. We're here with the Chief from Soto First Nations, and uh, we're here at Pemmican Days. And uh, tell us, what is Pemmican Days? Yeah, hey, welcome. Uh, glad you guys are here. It's just our annual um, Aboriginal Days. We just gather and be festive and, and practice our culture. Try to try to bring it back. Put all of our traditional games up for uh, for everybody to come watch and have fun. Well, what kind of games can people play? Uh, well, we got all kinds. We got DC, just hand games, horseshoes. Those are the two big ones. Um, bow and arrow, axe throwing, TP making, uh, tea boiling. Oh, there's quite a bit. Um, moose call, elk call, horse call. There's a whole bunch of activities for the kids, like slingshot and endurance race. We do a, a, an endurance race for adults and kids. Yeah. Adults one has uh, running, biking, horseback, bareback, horseback riding, um, and canoeing. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. So third, this is the 33rd annual 33rd, meeting. yeah. We started it 36 years ago, okay. but it, uh, with COVID, we missed a couple, and just historically, there was one other one missed. So, yeah. so which was your favorite event? Uh, to watch, I like the hand, the PEC hand games are my favorite to watch. Uh, to be part of, probably horseshoes, yeah. So why is, the, is it your favorite to watch in the Pagisi? It's just the, the energy. Everybody's into it. They're dancing, they're moving. You got the drums going. It's just a good time. You know, makes you, wakes up your spirit. And I know I, you said you guys had a meat rack there. Can you tell us a little bit about that? There's some moose there? Yeah, so we have um, our, our local um, native hunters go out uh, the week prior to Pemmican Days to uh, try to find um, bull moose to provide meat and food for the uh, the weekend. Uh, they also su supply the meat for um, our dry meat cutting competition, which people go in and the people who have the nicest stretch of uh, dry meat win. So, yeah, oh, it's really nice. fun. Yeah. And the one, the person who got it was? Uh, Tom Aaron, I believe, was our, our first big place Tom? winner. Yeah, Big Tom. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, good on him. That uh, contributes lots. It's a super important part to the weekend. So, okay. and it's nice. People can go over there and cut off a chunk of meat, cook it right there on the fire and eat it. Oh, well, you can actually meat. cook it yourself. Oh, yeah, you can go in there and cut off a chunk of meat and fry it up and, you know, all different cuts of meat in there. So cool. uh, there's always stuff cooking on the rack, so you can go in there and, yeah, it's nice to get some. Well, thank you for talking to us. Game. Appreciate it. Yeah, you guys definitely. Have fun. Yeah, thank, thanks thank for you. coming. Enjoy it. Today I wanted to take you on this walk that meant so much to me every day. This walk used to represent everything that I loved out of my life. My education, my accomplishments, my dreams my colleagues that I loved in the medical practice. As I do this walk today, I'm reminded of all of the emergency visits I've had over the last 15 months. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> As I do this walk today, I'm reminded of the countless hours I have spent trying to find support from my government.
but I don't even think I can get into the original neurologist again for months. And I'm, I'm going to lose my house. Like... My name is Jamie Killen. I have known Kristen for about 20 years. We met when I first moved to town. In this little shoddy restaurant, and she just had this like gigantically fun smile on her face, and she was just like, hi, I'm Kristen. And I knew immediately that I loved her. Hi. Hi. Hello. Do not <laughs> put that in the video. <laughs> I think she looks great. I'm videotaping. <laughs> okay, here we go. As a healthcare practitioner, we were offered the shot right away. So it was like doctors, nurses, and then the rest of us. Our clinic signed up immediately. I think that's one of the hardest parts for Kristen, uh, is that she was one of the first people to go out and get this vaccine. From the day that I left the hospital, like every day I just got worse. They had me on heavy doses of prednisone and sleeping pills by that time, and I was just getting worse every single day. So we reached out to multiple media stations, radio stations, newspapers, nobody got back to us. Any mainstream media, we reached out to everyone and nobody would take our story. This documentary is absolutely not about what's right or wrong. It is only about allowing a place for these stories to be heard so that people in the public can see that there are people that have been left behind by this. They're human beings. This could be your mom, your dad, your brother, your kid. And it wouldn't feel fair if it was one of them. I wonder if I'm ever gonna get better and I miss the life that I had. That shot took it away from me. It was 25 minutes after I got it and I've never been the same. But little darling, they're not there anymore. So just remember me, I'll remember.